Today we're going to read the story When Pagasso Met Mutis. And this is a story about a pig artist and a bull artist. But it's also the story about two famous artists whose names were Pablo Picasso and Henri Matisse. And they were never neighbors, but they became very close friends because they both became very famous artists in the 100 years ago. So let's read this story. When Pegaso Met Mutisse by Nina Lagan. There once was a young pig named Pegaso, while all the other piglets rolled in the mud and played games, Pegaso painted. He painted anything and everything, and in a most unusual way. And here we are looking down at Pegaso's studio. He's got his artist hat and an artist palette and paintbrush, and he's painting a portrait, but he puts a lot of lines and different kinds of shapes on it. And here we have Matisse, in this book known as Mutisse. At the same time, there was a young bull named Mutisse. Mutisse was not like other bulls. He wasn't interested in bull fighting. Mutis was happy only when he painted pictures, and he painted big, bold, bright pictures. In time, word of Pagasso's talent spread throughout the pig provinces. Soon, art-loving pigs from all over lined up to buy his creations. And look at all the art-loving pigs. And here he has the pig ladies of Davignon. At the same time, Mutis was getting famous in the cattle community. There weren't many households that, that didn't like a masterpiece, and that's a joke on the word masterpiece. And here's his fa famous masterpiece, and the cows are dancing around in a circle. Pegaso and Mutis were becoming art superstars, like we think of rock stars today. But this came with a price. Everybody wanted to see them. Art buyers, art sellers, art students, art historians, art groupies. It was an art attack. And here's all the people trying to see them. One day, Pegaso got fed up and said, I'm tired of this noisy pig pen. At the same time, Mutis declared, I'm sick of this crowded cow town. Needing a change, they both decided to look for a peaceful place where they could paint without distractions. And here's Mutis, and here's Pegaso, and here's all the people clamoring to see them. So each of the two artists looked far and wide for the perfect spot. Pegaso found a lovely farm looking towards the west and Mutis found a handsome farm facing west. I'm sorry, Picasso's was facing, facing east and Mutis's was facing west. After Picasso moved in, he went and introduced himself to his new neighbor across the street. At the same time, Mutis went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. And that is how Picasso met Mutis and coincidentally how Mutis met Picasso. And you can see here, this looks a little bit like their art. He had a lot of cubist tendencies, and Matisse did paper cutouts and things like this. At first, Pagasso and Matisse were friendly and welcomed each other as neighbors, but soon things began to change. And see, you can see they both were painting a lot of the same things, but look how different they looked. So they were mean to each other. It started one day when Pegaso criticized one of Mutis's paintings. Then Mutis made fun of one of Pegaso's. Mutis called Pegaso an art hog. And then Pegaso called Mutis a mad cow. Both mean names. Mutis quipped, you paint like a two-year-old. 
and Pagasso retorted, You paint like a wild beast. Mutis raged, Your colors look like mud. And Pagasso spat, Your paintings look like color by numbers. Then things got really out of hand. Splat! And it was a modern art mess. Pagasso stormed off to his house, and that that Mutis doesn't like my art, he huffed. Well, I'll show him. Then Mutis bullied his way to his house. I'll give that Pagasso something he can really criticize, he snorted. Then a full-scale feud erupted, but it was a most unusual battle. Armed with ladders and buckets of paint, Mutis launched the first attack. He started at dawn, and by the end of the evening, he had succeeded in transforming the outside of his house into a monster-sized mooster piece. And there it is. It's a big cow on the side of his house. And look at the pretty purple background and purple trees. This is how creative they were. So... Not to be outdone, not to be outdone, Picasso fired up his brushes in full view of the enemy and counterattacked. He turned his farm into a huge, ar outrageous pork of art. The two artists then retreated into their houses and pulled down their shades. Pagasso certainly didn't want to look out his window and stare at the Mutis, and Mutis had no desire to, in to give his rooms a view of a Pegaso. So there's Pegaso's beautiful masterpiece on his house and look at all the paint and marks all around it. This presented a problem and there seemed only one solution. Without a word to each other, Pegaso and Mutis each began to build a huge wooden fence down the middle of their road. At first, Pegaso and Mutis seemed satisfied. Both artists went back to painting by themselves. But after a while, Pagasso was surprised to find that he missed that bull-headed Mutis. And at the same time, Mutis found his studio empty without the presence of pig-headed Pagasso. So look at that. Pagasso's painting a portrait of Mutis, and Mutis is painting a portrait of Pagasso. Pagasso wondered pondered, that Mutis isn't such a bad artist. He has some interesting ideas. And Mutis moaned, that Picasso may not paint like me, but he does know, he knows what he's doing. So however, however, being naturally pig-headed and bull-headed, neither artist knew how to apologize to the other. So they did what they do best. They let their paintbrushes do the talking. See, this is Pegaso's house, and he's on the street. And this is Mutis's house, and he's on the street. Picasso painted on one side of the fence, and Mutis painted on the other. Each worked until they were exhausted. It was strangely quiet when they were done. Then Curious what Mutis had been doing, Pagasso sprinted around the other side. At the same time, Mutis galloped over to Pagasso's side. The silence was broken when the two artists began laughing at their amazing work of heart. <laughs> it wasn't a work of art. It was a work of heart of love. So here was their painting. 
From that day on, Pegaso and Mutis became great friends. They happily took down the fence and shared their different views. A few months later, a big museum bought the fence. Pegaso called his side when Pegaso met Mutis, and Mutis called his side when Mutis met Pegaso. And there it is, their masterpiece, and they're reaching over and touching their brushes. The circus called it, the critics, I'm sorry, the critics called it incredible. Or in France, French we say, incroyable. And look at all the beautiful people in the Museum of Modern Art. And that's a joke on the word museum. So it's incredible. And that's the end. And here's the true story of Picasso and Matisse. Picasso and Matisse were not a pig and a bull, but they were incredible artist characters. They are two of the finest artists of the 20th century. While they were never neighbors, they became close in a small world of art. Henri Matisse, born in December 31st, 1869 in France, Matisse didn't want to be an artist at first when he was little. He studied to be a lawyer, and when he was 21, he got sick with appendicitis. And while he was getting better, he painted his first painting. He liked painting so much that he ended his law career. Pablo Picasso was born October 25th in 1881 in Spain. His father was an art teacher who helped Picasso start painting when he was very young. It was soon obvious that he was very talented. Picasso studied painting in Barcelona and Madrid, two big cities in Spain. But as he was growing as an artist, Picasso decided to move to Paris, which was and still is a great city for art. And that is really where Picasso met Matisse. Both Picasso and Matisse were gaining recognition as artists in Paris. In fact, two Americans named Leo and Gertrude Stein, who lived there, started collecting or buying their paintings. In 1906, Gertrude Stein had a party, and that is where Picasso met Matisse for the first time. At first, Picasso and Matisse were friendly to each other. They even traded paintings. But M Matisse gave Picasso an African mask, which inspired him to paint in a primitive style, while he became a style he became very famous for. And soon it became apparent that Picasso and Matisse were becoming rivals and even competitors. Picasso did say some bad thing about Matisse's paintings, and Matisse did say some bad thing about Picasso's, but over time the two artists learned to respect each other and became lifelong friends. They both owned many of each other's paintings. Matisse once told Picasso, we must talk to each other as much as we can when one of us dies, there will be some things the other will never be able to talk of with anyone else. Matisse died in 1954, about 70 years ago, and Picasso died in 1973, about 50 years ago. But their lie, art lie, lives on in many museums, galleries, and private collections around the world. And that's the story of when Picasso met Mutis.